Sam. How you been? How you been down? Stan, if the business. <laughs> this add on to it right here, though. <laughs>
All right. And good evening once again. Welcome back to the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center, the Jackson State uh, University campus, the Tigers of Jackson State, and the Gra Tigers of Grambling. Sam Brown and Trey Johnson providing the play-by-play -play and color commentary for you uh, earlier on this afternoon, this evening. The Lady Tigers uh, won very, very uh, 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 great win, uh, beat, defeating the Lady Tigers of Grambling by a score of 89 to 60. And Coach Tamika Reed said that they needed this win, and it was a great win for the Lady Tigers. And tonight, the second part of this doubleheader, the Tigers of Jackson State and the Tigers of Grambling. Tigers against the Tigers. Right now, we're listening to the starting lineup for the Jackson State University Tigers. They have the lights off, and the phone lights are lit up. They light the phone lights up. And uh, uh, once again, uh, before we start this ball game, once again, for those of you who are just tuning in, you didn't hear the first broadcast, our condolences, thoughts, and prayers goes out to the Jewett family. Mr. Rob J. Um, lost his mother earlier in this week. And uh, we're doing this game in his behalf. That we'd like to say, you know, it's going to be okay. We'd like to send our condolences out uh, to the family and uh, of Rob J. Jackson State University dressed out in their... Homestanding white uniforms trimmed in blue with the blue numbers trimmed in red. Grambling State dressed out in their traveling red and gold uniforms uh, trimmed in the gold numbers trimmed in black. Now, here's the thing. Grambling State University has a, 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 a closet <laughs> full of uniforms. You never know what color they're going to have on. The colors are actually you know, a black and gold, but they have on the black is only the trim in this one. They have red and gold with the gold numbers trimmed in black. So they're dressed in red and, and, and yellow or red and gold tonight. Jackson State dressed in white with the blue numbers trimmed in red as well. So the sights and sounds you hear, those are the sunny boom of the south. This, this is the... This is the atmosphere we've been missing here over the past couple of games. The band has not been at the game over the past few games. I'm not sure if they were on assignment or not. Jackson State controls the tip to start this game off in an alley-oop dunk by McKinnis for Jackson State. Starts this game off. Oh, my God. And that's a great way to start it off. A nice lob pass from Benji Wallace. Jackson State breaking bread here first with a 2-0 lead on a thunderous dunk by McKinnis. And now the Tigers control it offensively again. Two points on the shot by Chris Howell makes the shot good for Jackson State. And you can just feel the energy in the building. 
from that opening dunk. That's what exactly what we need here tonight. Jackson State on the steal, and here we go again. And boom! Stingy Wallace with another two-point shot, a one-handed slam. Jackson State with a 6-0 lead. People didn't have to stand up too long tonight. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, let me get up. Oh, we got to sit down. Grambling has it offensively now. Jackson State on the defense. Shot taken up in. A three-point basket will count by Hillier. Tough break right there. I don't think Polk Hillier called glass on that one. <laughs> Tigers trying to get it across midcourt, and they do. Jackson State, Wallace. Benji Wallace has it now at the top of the key. Jackson State starting Benji Wallace, the 6'6 junior out of Homer, Louisiana. Chris Howell, a 6'4 senior out of Milwaukee. Three-point basket by Jackson State. And Peanut Ross shooting the basketball from the three and knocking it down, and that's a great sign for the Tigers. John Tellis Ross, Peanut starting out for Jackson State as well as McKinnis, a 6'7", freshman out of Brandon, and Lemmy Howard, the 6'7", sophomore out of Belzona. Jackson State with a 9-3 lead. Peanut brings it down court and has it stolen away by Grambling, and Peanut's going to commit the personal foul. Ivy Smith Jr. with a steal, and Peanut Ross commits his first personal. And Ivy Smith Jr. leads the conference in steals per game, averaging two Ivy steals Smith per game, and that Jr. is something that he is extremely talented at, and that's getting his hands on basketballs. Ramney's going to go with Ivy Smith Jr. at guard, uh, Dallas Polk Hilliard at guard, Anthony Gaston at guard as well, uh, Axel Empoyo at forward, a 6'8 junior from Meridian, Idaho, and uh, Devontae Jackson, a 6'9 junior out of Milwaukee, on the other wing, wearing number 25. So, making the shot from the line is Smith. Makes them both. So, Jackson State, 9-5 with a lead over Grambling. Cross-court pass is going to be out of bounds from Chris Howell, intended for Lemmy Howard on the other side, and it went out of bounds. And Grambling showing some full-court pressure, and that's exactly what they want to try to do is speed us up, force us into quick shots and turnovers. So Jackson State is on the defensive side right now. As Smith brings it down court for Grambling. Three-point attempt is up in and good by Hilliard. That's his second three on the night. And Polk Hilliard can really shoot the basketball from the three-point line. Jackson State trying to break the press, and they do. And at that time, McGinnis was the one in another lob under the basket. He was under there all by himself. But Lemmy Howard didn't see him. Backing up in the paint is Howell. Puts it up off the glass. Makes the basket good. And whenever Chris Howell has a mismatch like that, we have to feed him using his big body against the smaller Ivy Smith Jr. on the block. So the Tigers come up defensively in the zone. Grambling, trying to work it around, turnaround jumper from the perimeter is in and out, no good. Jackson State trying to get the rebound, Grambling comes away with it now. Shot taken, in and out, no good, tipped up. Tigers controlling it. Wallace getting it down court. And the Tigers set the offense. Howard now goes on the far side wing to Howell. Back up top, William Brown in the ball game for Jackson State. Brown, a six-foot senior out of Jackson. Howard gives it up. Three-point attempt taken. No good. Rebounded by Jackson State's Howell. And Jackson State will maintain possession as it was knocked out of bounds by Grambling. And that's what we have to do is crash the offensive glass. Grambling very vulnerable on the defensive glass as they try to use their talent and athleticism instead of boxing out. So there will be opportunities available on the offensive glass. Libby Howard puts up the short range jumper. It balances in and out. No good. Grambling comes away with a rebound. 
with the first half of play, 11-8. In case you just joined us, Jackson State and Grambling. Jackson State with the lead. Smith goes baseline, kicks it over on the far side. And they're battling for it on the floor. Jump ball, possession arrow points. To Grambling. Timeout on the court. We got a steeple investments timeout. We'll take a break as well. Jackson State 11, Grambling 8. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network. Welcome back to the Leakey Williams Athletics and Assembly Center. Jackson State 11, Grambling 8. 15-39 left in the first half of play. Sam Brown, Trey Johnson providing the play-by-play -play color commentary for you. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Zaxby's, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Richard Schwartz, Steeple Investments, Porter's Insurance, Team Logic IT, Hope Credit Union, Pizza Hut, Griffith Financial Services, Bowden's Body Shop, McCullum Physical Therapy, TCL Financial and Tax Services, and Stemstar. Grambling will inbound it now. Penetrating in the lane. One-handed jump shots up in, and it will be counted. And again, every time Grambling scores that basketball, they're going to try to set up in a 1-2-1-1 one, 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 or a 2-2-1 two, two, full-court press. Jackson State with a three-point attempt. It's going to be no good. And the Tigers maintain possession. Brown controlling it offensively for Jackson State. Howard now has it near the timeline. On the far side, Brains worked it around. William Brown penetrates in the lane, has a shot blocked. Jackson State comes away with it now once again. Wallace has it, and he's fouled underneath. And good job by Benji Wallace on that offensive rebound, attacking the rim, and Trayvon Bunch, 6'9", 6'10", shot blocker, Benji Wall is going right into his chest, negating his shot blocking ability, drawing the foul. Bunch commits the foul. That's going to send Benji Wallace to the line. Wallace shot up, in, and good. The Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. Benji Wallace, a 6 6 junior out of Homer, Louisiana, makes the first shot good. Second shot coming up. Wallace sets the line, puts up the shot, makes it good. And the Tigers of Jackson State look to be settling back into a 2-3 zone, or a 3-2 zone it looks to be. Jackson State providing a little pressure. Shot's going to be no good. Block. Jackson State will get it. Brown brings it down court quickly now for Jackson State. Brown at point. Chris Howell on the baseline. Gives it up. Wallace puts it up and good. And that looked to be Javius McGinnis. McGinnis. To correct McGinnis with the basket. And that was a good job of staying with it as Bunch was there going straight up in the air. And Javius McGinnis able to finish. Great basket by McKinnis. Rambling trying to work something around the inside. Jackson State saying, no way. Great defensive effort on the part of the Tigers. Shot taken, and it's good. Rambling with the basket. Prince Moss. Prince Moss. And Prince Moss has been playing lights out for Rambling over the past few ball games. 
averaging 20 plus points a game over the past two to three ball games. 13 minutes and 47 seconds left in the half. Jackson State with a 15-12 lead over Grambling right now. Grambling tried to get a steal. Shot taken and good by Chris Howell. And when Chris Howell is making his jump shot, that bodes well for the offense of Jackson State, able to really open up the floor. 17-12, Jackson State with the lead. Grambling with the basketball, penetrating in the paint. Shot up, no good. Tigers come away with it. Jackson State with a rebound. Jackson State gets it across midcourt. Thirteen minutes left in the first half of play. Lob pass across the middle, intended for McInnes, but it was knocked out. Grambling player is down as well as Chris Howell. Both players are up. This time of foul, Chris Howell, this first. Howell commits a personal foul, this first personal. Tina and Libby return for the Tigers. So Ross comes back in for Jackson State. As well as Howard. Tigers on the defensive side. There's a steal. And we got showtime. Wallace is on his way. Has it knocked out. And a foul is going to be called by on Moss. He saved a thunderous dunk that was about to be applied. <laughs> right, and it looked like they just called him out of bounds, but he knocked it out of bounds. No foul. But the basket was good by Lemmy Howard for Jackson State. And the no Tigers, foul on the play. And the Tigers of Jackson State really taking advantage of the bigger size of Grambling in, in the paint. The Tigers are scoring a lot of baskets inside the paint, even though Grambling has the size advantage. Jackson State... Providing some pressure. Basket by Bunch. Bunch missed with, with that basket. 19-14. Jackson State with the lead. Brown with a long range. Richard Schwartz three-point jumper. Good. And that's great ball movement. Benji Wallace turning down a good shot to get a better shot. Finding Grisby Brown for the knockdown three-pointer. Tigers trying to ease away from Grambling here. Grambling with an obvious height advantage. That basket underneath by Hillett was good. So Jackson State facing up against Grambling. Ross across to Brown. Back up top. Lemmy Howard puts the jumper up from the baseline. It's going to be no good. Grambling comes away with it. Down court quickly now. It's going to be Moss who puts it up. In and out. No good. Rebounded by Wallace for Jackson State. As Benji Wallace says, hold it down. And Grambling sitting back in his zone. Brown. On the bent wing, goes up top to Peanut. Back up top. They're working it inside. Wallace faces the basket, takes a couple of dribbles, shoots the jumper. Good! And that's good patience right there by Benji Wallace, catching the ball in the middle of the zone. Didn't have anything initially, but took his time, able to knock down the jumper over the bigger bunch. 24-16 is our score. Jackson stayed with the lead over Grambling. 10-20 left in the first half of play. Jackson State drops back in the zone. Grambling trying to work something inside. Shot's going to be blocked by Howard. And the Tigers come away with another steal here. Tigers doing a good job defensively, really packing the paint, making that area look very small to the Grambling offensive players from the perimeter. As Ross, they call him Peanut, controls it offensively at point for Jackson State. Howard on the baseline on the near side. Cross-cut pass. Brown fakes the three. Now takes the jumper from the perimeter. It's good! And he's fouled. And that's a nice pump fake by William Brown. 
Grisby, known by his teammates as Grisby, able to get the defender up in the air. One dribble pull up and a knockdown. He'll go to the line and shoot and one. And we've got a steeple investments timeout with 9.43 left in the first half. Jackson State 27, Grambling 16. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. remaining in the first half of play. Jackson State 26, Grambling 16. The Tigers out to an early 10-point lead, right? And great offensive output here early on in this ball game. The Tigers really shrinking the floor on the defensive end, really getting after it, making Grambling have to work for shots. But love the assertiveness of the Jackson State offense, attacking the paint, really going on the inside, not worrying about the size of Grambling and negating that size by being more physical. Earlier this evening, Jackson State Lady Tigers defeated Grambling Lady Tigers 89-60. And other women's scores uh, in the third quarter was, was uh, Alabama State leading Alcorn 33-20. These are the women's scores. At halftime, Alabama A&M 28, Southern 32. In the third quarter, Mississippi Valley trailing Prairie View 53-31. And Pine Bluff and Texas Southern, they kicked off a few minutes ago. We don't have a score on those games yet. Keep you posted. At the line shooting for Jackson State, Brown misses the and one. Nine thirty-four left. Jackson State on the defensive side, rambling with the basketball. Whistle blown. Jesse Love commits his first personal. So Gramling will inbound it. Gramling on the offensive side. Traveling violation assessed against Gramling. So that's another turnover. Credit the Jackson State defense for that one. Tigers keeping Rivero on that side in the corner where he caught that basketball on that base on out of bounds play, and he really just switched the pivot foots right in front of the referee. <laughs> Can't do that. Jackson State getting it down court. William Brown controlling it. Goes to Howard on the far side wing. Kicks it up top to Brown. Pena on the near side. He kicks it in to McInnes who pushes it back up top to Wallace. 10 on the shot clock. Brown fakes. Razzle Dazzle penetrates inside the free throw line. A, oh my God, and he missed the shot. He almost broke his ankles on that one. Million dollar move, but we gotta finish the shot right there. A nice move by William Brown breaking down the defender off the dribble. Would have made the highlights, but he missed the shot. Which means it was just another play. <laughs> 8.34 left. First half of play. 10 on the shot clock. Brown has it again with five on the shot clock. Double team. And he loses it. Grambling comes away with it. Fresh shot clock. They're working around fast. Underneath the basket. Shot up in and good by Shaq Athey. And that was a bad offensive possession on the kick out right there by the Tigers. Not able to get a shot attempt up. 
26 to 18 is our score right now. Jackson State leading. We're in the first half of play. Ross gives it over. Three-point attempt taken. In and out. No good. Rambling comes away with it. That's going to be Moss. And he gives it up. Smith comes down court with it at point guard. Ross passes it inside. Whistle blown underneath. It looks like an offensive foul right there. Offensive foul is going to be on Jackson. That's going to be his first personal foul. We're going to take another Stephen Investments timeout with 738 left in the half. Jackson State, 26, Rambling, 18. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network. After the first half, Jackson State 26, Grambling 18. The Tigers trying to hold on to this lead to end the half here. Playing pretty good right now against Grambling. Doing a very good job of being aggressive, taking the fight to Grambling, something we've not done well of in the past four ball games, but here tonight, very assertive, very aggressive here on the offensive end and continuing to maintain the defensive aggression. Chris Howell has it for Jackson State offensively, gives it up. Peanut controls it now, goes over to Benji Wallace. Wallace around the far side, stops, gives it up. Lemmy Howard comes back over on the near side and working it around, trying to penetrate in the paint, shot up, in and out, block. Foul is going to be called. It looked like the entire time out of that timeout, that was what Coach Brent wanted was Chris Howell one-on-one -on, -one on a clear side as he's very good going to his right hand and attacking the basket, and he's able to draw the foul. Shot by Howell is going to be no good from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. Prince Moss commits his second personal foul. Correction, that's going to be his first personal. They didn't get him for the first one. And he misses the second shot as well. Tigers have to capitalize on free opportunities to score. So Grambling will have it offensively. Jackson State. Looking at 10 seconds on the shot clock. Smith slips down but gets the pass off. It's going to be no good. Jackson State comes away with a rebound, and here comes Howell and company. Howell, down court, takes a step, throws it down. McGinnis with the basket. Two-handed dunk underneath. Great pass from Howell to McGinnis. And again, attacking the rim. Chris Howell attacking the basket, causing those big shot blockers of Grambling to go for the fake and go for the block. Javis McGinnis left all alone on the other side of the rim. Grambling trying to penetrate in the paint. One-handed shot taken up by... And Poyo is good. And Grambling in a man-to-man, -man, which they've been in for the past four minutes or so, who wants to play zone mostly. How puts up the tough shot. It's going to be no good. Ivy comes up with it down court, passes it over, and a dunk is done by Grambling's and Poyo. And Ivy Smith in the open floor is going to be a problem to handle with his quickness, passing ability, and his speed. 
And Poyo is out of Meridian, Idaho. Where did they recruit him from? Who recruits in Idaho? <laughs> in the I guess, I guess Grandma. Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they didn't get him from Idaho. They probably uh, got him from a junior college right, or something. Right. Benji Wallace commits his uh, personal foul. First personal and offensive foul. And you like the aggression of Jackson State on the offensive end. Tigers really pushing tempo. But Benji Wallace has to be smart and understand time and possession, when to go and when not to. So Jackson State now set up in their defensive posture. And the young lady cleaning the floor again and again just... Yeah, she just sauntering out there like she had <laughs> cleaned the kitchen. <laughs> Not in any hurry at all. So here we go. Browning has it now. Jackson stayed in the zone. Athy comes up. Five eighteen left. Twenty eight twenty two Jackson State still maintaining a lead here over Grambling. As Benji Wallace brings it down court. They're trying to work something in the inside here. Five minutes now left in the half. Jackson Stakes. Howell puts it up. No good. Gets the rebound. Whistle blown. Let's see. We got a official's time out here. Looks like one of the Gremlin players was hit in the face with an elbow. And Javius McGinn is able to keep that possession alive, although he didn't grab the offensive rebound. He fought the Gremlin player for the rebound, and that ball bounced out wide to the Jackson State player. So we got some substitutions coming in. Boyo is going to come out. And Xavier Pert, the 6'10 senior, 260 pounds out of Miami, Florida, is coming in. Big old boy. Gremlin definitely has size on that back line. Howell at the top of the key with it now for Jackson State. Goes over to Peanut. Ross on the near side. Gives it up. Howell now penetrates in the lane. Stops. Puts it up. Makes the basket good. And a foul is called. Chris Howell being aggressive, attacking the rim. That's when he's at his best. Able to go and finish with contact and get the and one. Fouls on Ivy. That's going to send Chris Howell to the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. Shot is up, in and out, no good. And that's three free throws missed in a row by Chris Howell. So Howell missed the shot from the line. 30 to 22 is the score. Jackson State maintaining a point lead here with 417 left in the half. Grambling. With it offensively now. Ivy has it stolen away. And Peanut comes away with it for Jackson State. Wallace now has it across the midcourt line as they set the offense with four minutes left in the half. Spencer has it near the top of the key for Jackson State. 13 on the shot clock. Spencer, the big body, drives in the paint, puts it up. No good, but it was tipped up in the end. And Davis McGinnis. Davis McGinnis came flying in. Almost looked like he was going to dunk that basketball. Was hanging in the air for a while and able to lay it in. And Grampling called a timeout. So we'll take a steeple investments timeout as well with 339 left in the half. Jackson State 32, Grampling 22. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network.
And welcome back to the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center, Jackson State and Grambling going at it here. Jackson State leading by 10, 32-22. As the Tigers are holding on here, turnover situation, Grambling has uh, uh, actually only seven points in the points in the paint off turnovers. Jackson State with eight. And the Tigers doing a good job at second chance points, six second chance points. Grambling has none here early on in this ball game. Graham has turned the ball over six times thus far in the half. So Jackson State creating some offensive, some defensive pressure here. A great charge. Graham foul on number zero. And Benji Wallace doing a good job on the ball, defending right there, able to slide his feet and beat the offensive player to the spot and take the charge. Shaq Athey commits his first personal. So Howard checks back in for Jackson State to give uh, Spencer a break. Jackson State and coming into this contest, 9-17 and 17 overall, 6-7 and seven in the SWAC. Grambling is 13-13. and 13. They're at 500 right now, and that's 7-6 and six in the SWAC. So, again, evenly matched. In the very, Southwest Athletic Conference. very evenly matched. And us coming off a four-game losing streak, Grambling coming off a two-game losing streak of their own. Both teams are desperate, but I think that the, the boys have came out tonight and showed that they're they're very hungry for a win, doing a very good job of executing the game plan here early on. So the Tigers now on the offensive side. Nemi Howard almost had it, but they lost it away to Grambling. So Grambling coming back down court with it. Smith controlling it offensively. Ivy Smith Jr., the six-foot junior out of Tacoma, Washington, gives it on the wing to Hilliard. Hilliard kicks it out to Emporio. Whistle blown. Foul is going to be assessed against Nimi Howard. That's Howard's first personal. Once again, Jackson State University basketball brought to you in part by Zaxby's, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Richard Swartz, Stiefel Investments, Porter's Insurance. Team Logic IT, Hope Credit Union, Pizza Hut, Griffith Financial Services, Bolden's Body Shop, McCullum Physical Therapy, TP TCL Financial and Tax Services, and Stem Star. So grabbing now. Smith tried to penetrate in the lane, and he was knocked down and fouled hard by McGinnis. It looked like McGinnis did a good job of going straight up. But Smith, giving up his body, jumping into McInnes, made it look worse than maybe it actually was. So it's going to send Ivy Smith Jr. to the line, shooting two. First shot up, in and good. Brown checks back in for Jackson State, giving uh, Spencer a break. It looks like an offensive substitution for Coach Brent getting Khalil Spencer out of the game and putting Bridgeby on the floor for offense on this possession. So Spencer makes the second shot as Grambling double teams Jackson State. And Jackson State breaks the press for the two on one. And that is again McGinnis with a lob and a two handed dunk. And a good job by Bridgeby Brown of attacking the pressure after Jack State broke the initial pressure of Grambling, two on one on the backside, and you know that big guy's got to make a decision. Just throw it up to McGinnis. McGinnis was uh, looking at his hand, and he, hopefully he didn't injure that on that last dunk. He was looking at his hand all the way down court. Evidently he's okay. And Grambling showing that pressure once again. So Grambling with a full court press. Jackson State getting it across midcourt. And here we go. Tigers trying to work some offense here. 
Wallace highlight throws it down as McGinnis again. He comes out of nowhere with a two-handed slam on the other side of the goal. Javis McGinnis is a man-child out here on the basketball floor playing above the rim and really just a handful to deal with on the offensive glass. What'd you tell him in there, man? <laughs> Jackson State playing very, very tough defensively. And the Tigers playing with a passion and energy we, we did not see over the past few ball games. And this is exactly what we came to expect out of Coach Brent teams is playing tough, playing with this type of energy and aggression. 36-24 is the score of Jackson State with a minute 20 seconds left in the first half of play. Tigers have it offensively now. Wallace gives it up to Howell. Howell tried to lob it in. Grambling coming away with it. They're wrestling for it on the floor. Whistle is blown. They're going to say it's Jackson State's ball. Your possession arrow pointing to us. So Jackson State will have possession. As they set to inbound the basketball. And we have another wet spot here. And here comes the little mock girl. <laughs> Do they have, a, like, a training class on how to do that? No, I don't think so. <laughs> she she did not do it like they do it on the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> so Jackson State will get, it, get ready to try to inbound it again with a minute, two seconds left in the half. And the officials are holding it up right here, there, checking with something on the uh, at the scores table. I'm not sure if they're questioning the possession arrow. And they're pointing towards the monitor, trying to see if they can, but they're still on the court. The people at the scores table are looking at the monitor, and I guess they're just going to, they're going to go with what they have. Jackson State will inbound it here. As Howell gets set to inbound it, he gets it in. William Brown penetrates in the lane, puts up the short-range jumper. He's going to be fouled. It's going to be fouled by Riverio. And William Brown attacking the paint. Very aggressive here tonight. Doing a very good job here early on. William Brown at the, at the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, shooting two. And I'm looking at the Grambling roster. They have only one player on their team from Louisiana, and he's from Monroe. They have players from Cincinnati, Ohio, Tacoma, Washington, Chesapeake, Virginia, Milwaukee, Richmond, Arkansas, Idaho, Florida, <laughs> California. So it must not be too many people in Louisiana can play basketball, <laughs> unless they're at Southern or LSU or something like that. Jackson State at the line, missing the shot. It's William Brown. So Gramley comes away with a rebound. Shot up, in and out, no good. Tigers come away with it. Foul is going to be assessed against Gramley. Looks like uh, Hilliard yeah, over the back foul. Pogue Hilliard frustrated with that missed shot attempt. Really had no shot at the rebound. Just went and gave up a foul. And the Tigers are in the bonus, although the Tigers have missed the last four free throws in a row. Khalil Spencer, the junior from Memphis. At the line, at the line shooting, shooting for Jackson State. Spencer at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, shooting the one and one. And he misses the first shot. Grambling comes away with a rebound with 42 seconds left. Ribeiro. Gets it down the court. We got a whistle away from the basketball, and they're going to have to mop this up again because we've got a wet spot right down underneath the basket. Yeah, Polk Hilliard went down the play before, and nobody cleaned up the wet spot. And, well, it looks like Devontae Jackson was 
moving around down in that area, and he may have hurt himself. And the mop girl said, hey, I didn't even come here for this. I just wanted to get in the game free. <laughs> <laughs> they said, hold the mop. Now I got to work. So they're, they're making sure she gets it all up. So now the official is doing <laughs> Okay, so they got it up. And they still don't have it up. They I still mean, have it up. Do you think they should do that at the end of the half? Well, Start they have over? to do it now because it's a wet spot on the floor during game play. And just now, like we just saw Devontae Jackson going down. Well, you ask yourself this question now. I mean, is the wet spot from the play or is it from the, the, the rain? Uh, it's definitely from the play because that's exact. That's in the exact same spot that Polk Hilliard failed the play before. And I was out on the floor before the game. There's no perspiration on the floor. So Grambling will get an inbound with 33 seconds left. 17 on the shot clock, by the way. Whistle blown away from the basketball. Foul. Foul's going to be on Spencer. That's Khalil Spencer's first personal. Spencer, the 6'4 junior out of Memphis. That's going to send to the line Xavier Pert for Grambling with 29 seconds left. So Pert's going to be at the line shooting for Grambling. And he misses the shot. Grambling comes away with a rebound. Quick shot up in and out. No good. And it goes out of bounds. Last touched by Jackson State. Okay, the officials are discussing it. One says one way, one says the other way. I wonder who gets to override who. <laughs> And we have some fans now here, one from Gremlin and one from Jackson State. Tiger's ball. So it's Jackson State. Well, he says Tiger's ball. So <laughs> Which Tigers? <laughs> right. So Jackson State will maintain the basketball. 20 seconds left in the half. And the Tigers will hold for the last shot here. 10 seconds. Peanut has it now at the timeline. Now he makes a move. Gives it up. Brown penetrates, stops, pops, good. And that's great execution going into the half. Brown ends the half with a two-point jumper from the perimeter. Your thoughts on the first half, Trey? Thought it was a great job by the Jackson State Tigers of coming out and really hitting grounding in the mouth first. Again, bringing the fight to them. You're on your home floor doing a great job on the offensive end of being very aggressive, attacking the paint. And obviously making shots always helps, but the defensive intensity remains as the number one defensive team in the SWAC. The Tigers haven't let up on that end, but today offensively really bringing that same firepower. We're in the Zaxby's halftime right now. Our score, Jackson State 38, Rambling 24. We'll take a break and come back with halftime stats and comments. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network.
And welcome back to the Lee e. Williams Athletics and Assembly Center. We are at halftime. Our score, Jackson State 38, Rambling State 24. And the Zaxby's halftime. What's better than finishing the game with a buzzer beater to win? Finishing the game with a buzzer beater and going to Zaxby's to celebrate it. Zaxby's hand-breaded chicken is fresh, made to order, and perfect for Duncan and the world-famous Zax sauce. So load up your friends and stop by Zaxby's after the game. Home of the famous chicken fingers, wings, and salads. Order ahead at Zaxby's.com or on the app. Zaxby's is indescribably good. Proud sponsor of Jackson State University, Athletics. And hey, our, our halftime statistics looking pretty good. Jackson State University uh, leading all scorers McKinnis with 12 points who opened this game with a thunderous dunk that he set did. the tone for Jackson State. He really did. Uh, and actually they're playing well and breaking the press in the first half. And that's what's opened up. Actually William Brown coming in the game help break the press. When he got in the middle of the floor, we start getting dunks and layups on the back end of that. Jackson State shooting 63% from the floor, 17 out of 27. They're shooting 40% from three-point range, and they're only shooting 22% from the free throw line. They're two out of nine, and that's got to improve. That's got to improve, and that's going to be the key to us winning this game. With us having this lead, they're going to foul us at the end. And we need to knock down free throws. Also, we're assisting on these uh, baskets, too. We have 11 assists in the first half, too. So that's been good. We've been taking care of the ball. Jackson State playing in the paint real tough. 20 points in the paint in the first half compared to Grambling's 12 points in the paint. So Jackson State playing inside a whole lot against these guys, the big guys. Bigger guys. They are bigger guys, and we're attacking them right now. And, and the lanes are opening up because they were pressing us. Now they've kind of settled back and trying to zone us, but we got a good rhythm of scoring going. And we, if with us shooting 60% in the first half, that's great. We need to keep that up. Jackson State has six points off second chance points as well. Second chance points, six. And uh, Grambling had, doesn't have any second chance points as well at all. And uh, off the bench, Jackson State, seven points off the bench. Grambling only six. And uh, that, that's pretty good for Jackson State. It, it is. And, and that's, a lot of that's been William Brown. He had a big three. He also hit some shots inside the paint, and then he did get to the free throw line, but we didn't knock those free throws down, no, so that's the ball we have to catch. No player in foul trouble for Jackson State. They all have one personal foul, with an, with an exception of William Brown. He hadn't had any fouls. Everybody else on Jackson State's uh, team has one personal foul, which means uh, the entire team is playing hard tonight. Oh, we are, and I like the energy, too. We started off with a dunk tonight. And, and that kind of got the momentum going. So uh, when McKinnis is playing like that and he's guarding that rim and jumping at the rim, we're, we're a real good team. Jackson State leading Grambling 38 to 24. We're at halftime. The Zaxby's halftime show. And we've got uh, some basketball going on right now. Well, the first game was the Omegas against the Kappas. The Omegas won that one. And now the Omegas are playing the Alphas on the other end. And it look like they got some shooters. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to come back with more halftime. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network.
And welcome back to the Lee E. Williams Athletics and Assembly Center, where the Jackson State Tigers are leading the Grambling State Tigers here, 38-24. And we have a floor full of Greeks right now. Yeah, they're out there, man, and everybody's doing their dance, man, so they're getting it in right now. That's called Greek unity all the way around. <laughs> you have all of them represented. They're on the floor, and they're actually doing their own struts, and nobody is in nobody else's way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all getting it in, man. You, have, you even have some, uh, some Omegas from Grambling that, uh, that made their way to the floor. Oh, that's all right. Full participation. Absolutely. Once again, we're at halftime. Our score, Jackson State. 38, Grambling State, 24. We're in the second half, about to get the second half of play underway here. And in the first half, Jackson State, of course, leading all scores with 12 points was McKinnis, uh, followed by Chris Howell with eight. And uh, William Brown finishing with seven points in the half. Benji Wallace with six. And Dantellis Peanut Ross finished it with three points in the first half, along with Lemmy Howard with two. Jackson State ended up with 38 points. Looking on the other side of the basketball, you have uh, Dallas Polk Hilliard finishing the first half with eight points for Grambling. Uh, Ivy Smith finishing with four. And everybody else on Grambling's team that scored, they only scored once, twice. Uh, two points. Anthony Gasson with two. Emporio with two. Uh, Demonte Jackson with two. Athy with two. Moss with two and Bunch with two. So if you can control uh, Grambling's offense like that and hold them down to like two points and a half, come on now. Yeah, that, that, that's great. And we're doing good with containing their guard play right now, too. So we want to keep those guys out front, make them work hard, and don't let them just drop that ball off in there to those big guys right now. And uh, they're shooting 50%, but we're limiting the number of shots that they're getting. So we're almost doubling their shots, so we need to keep that up, too. We need to rebound well and put that ball back up in that goal. Earlier tonight, Jackson State Lady Tigers defeated Grambling State Lady Tigers 89-60. to So Jackson State trying to uh, make this one a uh, win-win for both teams tonight. Yes, uh, the young ladies are playing well right now. I can see them peeking out at the right time of the year here. So we need them to keep playing like they're playing right now. We've got a, uh, we're in the Zaxby's halftime show, Jackson State. 38, Grambling State, 24. We'll take another break and come back with more halftime comments. You're listening to Jackson State Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. There you go. <laughs>
two minutes and 25 seconds left before we start the second half of play. We're into the Zaxby's halftime show. The Tigers of Jackson State leading the Tigers of Grambling 38-24. What do you think Jackson State has to do to come out in the second half to maintain? Uh, be aggressive like we were in the first half. Attack that goal. Take those open, open jumpers early when we have them. And, and just play, play free and aggressive like we've been playing. Rebound well. And keep these guys in front of us. Keep these big guys off the off the glass, and we can win this game. Oh, and make our free throws because they're going to foul us at the end of the game. We need to make those free throws. Free throws are going to count toward the end of this ball game, so you're going to have to make those free throws right now. Jackson State uh, not doing well in the from the free throw line. They're only shooting 22 percent from the free throw line, two out of nine. But Grambling is shooting 80 percent. They've only been to the line five times, and they made four out of five from the line. So that could come back to haunt you later on. It, it, it can, and we're doing well not fouling, and the referees are letting us play too. So I appreciate that. You know that they're letting us be. We're not really over aggressive, but they're letting us play our style of ball right now. We need to keep playing that way. We're going to come back with the start of the second half of play after we take a one-minute break. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. Back in one minute. And back here at the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center, Jackson State and Grambling getting set to start the second half of playoff here. The Tigers of Jackson State with a 38-24 lead. And uh, what did Coach Brent talk about in the locker room at halftime? Really just remembering the Tech Southern game, understanding that Grambling is a team and a school with pride, and they're not going to lay down and give you this game just because you're up 14 at the half. Maintain what we were doing defensively, but be a little bit more sharper on offense, taking advantage of the opportunities that we have in the mismatches with the bigger guard, bigger guys guarding the smaller guards that we have. So Jackson State starting back out in the second half on the defense. Grambling will have possession of it, and they do to open the second half. We're in the route here now. Smith has it for Grambling. Goes down on the baseline to Jackson. They kick it back up top. Three-point attempt taken. No good. Tipped up. Rebounded by Pina. Jackson State comes away with it. Ross. Ross walking it down court. Now getting it across midcourt. Goes to Howard. Howard gives it up. Howell. Back to Pina up at the top of the key. Ten on the shot clock. Wallace has it now with five on the shot clock. Foul is called. Foul is going to be assessed against Smith. That's going to be his second personal, which just uh, was three seconds on the shot clock. He wasn't paying attention. Exactly. Uh, the Tigers of Jackson State bailed out by Grambling on that one. Tigers got to be mindful of that shot clock. Lemmy Howard has it now for Jackson State. Goes back over to Peanut. Peanut looking inside. Sees nothing. Goes up top. Wallace fakes the three. Gives it back to Peanut. Takes the three. No good. Grambling comes away with a rebound. That's going to be Hiller. And Smith takes it down quite quickly for the G-Men. They're trying to work something around the baseline. Now kick it back up top. And Pollo is going to drive in the lane. And he's going to be fouled. By Howard. And Boyo is a big athletic four man able to catch the ball out around the three point line and put it on the floor to get to the rim. 
the second time he's done that tonight and able to draw a foul on Lemmy Howard. 6'8", 215. He's a big guy. So Grambling will inbound it. Jackson has it on the baseline on the near side. He bags up in the lane. Turn around, passes it over. And Empoyo throws it down, and he's going to be fouled. And that's that size and athleticism. Jackson State double-teaming the post, but went very late on that one, and Empoyo was able to just follow his man as he went to go double-team to the rim, able to catch the pass and finish. So that's going to be Empoyo's third, I mean, correction, that's going to be Lemmy Howard's third personal foul as Empoyo made the extra one. 27-38 now, Jackson State still with the lead now with 18-16 left in the ballgame. As the Tigers try to work some offense here, Lemmy Howard with a jump shot from the perimeter. It's going to be no good. Rebounded by Jackson State. Howell, who gets it back up top, fresh shot clock. Peanut has it up at the top of the key. Goes over to Wallace. They're trying to work it inside. Howell drives in the paint. And it was thrown back down, but not before the whistle was blown. It looked like they got a foul on Polk Hilliard on the drive of Chris Howe. That's uh, Hilliard commits his second personal. It's going to send to the line Chris Howell going to the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. And Chris Howell in the first half, 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Now 0 for 4. He's got to make these free throws as... You got to think these are going to come down, going to be very key and important down the stretch. Jackson State only shooting 22% from the line in the first half. They're on two of nine and continuing to miss the free throws, and that could come back to haunt you. Exactly right. You have to take care of free opportunities to score the basketball. 17.42 left in the ballgame. Jackson State creating another turnover. Grambling turned it over, threw it out of bounds, so the Tigers won't inbound it. And again, we caught a break on that one as Devontae Jackson was open underneath the basket, but that pass was like a bullet. Lemmy Howard inside. Howell is going to be called for traveling. He got it, took a step before he took the bounce. Yeah, caught it and shuffled his feet right before he decided to take off. So Jackson State. Goes back on the defensive side now. Coach Brent doing a very good job of switching up the defensive looks. The Tigers now, the Tigers of Jackson State now showing zone. Tigers in the zone. Grambling, trying to work something underneath. Shot in and out, no good. Jackson State got it, but Grambling took it away and got a fresh shot clock. Jackson. Gives it up to Smith, who puts up a three and makes it good. And Ivy Smith, with his first shot attempt of the game, you have to know that he will get going here soon. Tigers now on the offensive side. Wallace on the far side, goes baseline, puts it up off the glass, no good. Gramlin comes away with it, and here comes the G-man on the break. Athey having trouble with it, loses it, and here comes Wallace. Puts it up, and he's going to be fouled. He went down pretty hard, but he was fouled. And if that's on Polk Hilliard, that's going to be three fouls, and that's going to be big for Jackson State. As Polk Hilliard is very key to what Grambling is trying to do on the offensive end of the floor. And that is on Hilliard. That's going to be three on Hilliard. So that's going to see if he's going to come out of the ball game. Benji Wallace at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, shooting two. First shot is up. In and out. No good. Hits the back of the rim. And we are now out of the half and two for 12 from the free throw line in this ball game. And that's completely unacceptable for our ball club. As we work on free throws so much in practice, just un, just don't understand how you get in the game and not able to convert these easy shot attempts. And he makes that one. 
Wow, that's one out of two on the line on that series there. 39-30, Jackson State with a nine-point lead with 16-20 left in the ballgame now. There's a shot taken by Grambling, no good. Rebounded by Peanut as he comes down court. Jackson State backing in the lane. Shot's going to be stolen away. Smith is going to try the crossover dribble, but he was fouled hard by Peanut at that time, and both players are slow to get up. Yeah, it looks like they may have bumped knees. As Ivy Smith was trying to cross back over to his left. Yeah, they're going to call a timeout and get this one sorted out. We got a Stephen Investments timeout with 15.58 left in the game. Jackson State 39, Grambling 30. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. They're going to look and see if this was intentional. And welcome back to the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center. The Jackson State Tigers 39, the Grambling State Tigers 30 here. We're at 15.58 left in this contest. As JSU trying to maintain this lead here and get out of here with a win. Both teams now are on their respective benches as the officials are uh, looking at the monitors. What do you think they're looking for, Trey? They're probably checking to see if this was either a clear path foul or an intentional foul on Peanut Ross as Ivy Smith was pushing on the break. Peanut Ross was out in front, so I would have to think they would be checking to see if this was intentional or an unsportsmanlike foul. It didn't seem to be, but it was just such a violent collision. They just have to check it. So if it was intentional, then they'll get two shots to the ball? Yes. So the officials are still discussing it right now. Trying to see what's going on with this one. Now they're breaking up. And they'll go to immediate timeout anyway. So they did go to immediate timeout after this timeout. And while they do that, we'd like to let you know that uh, this game is brought to you in part by Zaxby's. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Richard Swartz, Stiffel Investments, Porter's Insurance, Team Logic IT, Hope Credit Union, Pizza Hut, Griffith Financial Services, Bolden's Body Shop, McCullum Physical Therapy, TCL Financial and Tax Services, and Stem Star. Like to let you know, of course, that Bolden's Body Shop provides collision repair on all makes and models. They served the Jackson area for over 40 years. Call Bolden's Body Shop at 601 355 3485. Bolden's Body Shop. It's your vehicle, it's your choice. Choose Bolden's Body Shop. So they're still checking the, the monitors, Trey? They're still discussing something. I'm not sure if they're disagreeing on what the call should be, but there should be a crew chief who can really make that call. Overall, obviously, he takes into account what each official is saying, but they're probably checking to make sure it, that they're right on the call and explaining it to both coaches. So they're talking with both coaches right now, and Grambling's five players are back out on the court, and they're beckoning for JSU to come back on the court, and here they come. So out of all of that, 
It's a common foul. Grambling will inbound it. So Jackson stays still with a nine-point lead. And here we go. Shot taken. No good. Rebounded by Jackson State. And the Tigers come away with it. Down court quickly with it. Peanut. Looking in. Goes over on the near side to Spencer. Spencer on the baseline. Kicks it back up top. Six on the shot clock. Shot taken. One-handed hook by McGinnis. And Javis, Javis McGinnis not known for his... Offensive prowess on the low post, but when he catches the basketball in that position, able to just throw a jump hook, he's very good at it. Jackson State on the defensive side. There's a uh, steal. Jackson State going for it. And the Tigers come away with it. Went out of bounds. Let's see. They're going to say it was a foul against McInnes. Yeah, McInnes was hustling to the loose ball. Did a great job of getting on the floor, but he undercut a grambling player on that one, so there's going to be an automatic foul. So it's going to be McGinnis' second personal foul. So Grambling will inbound it. Moss gets it in to Smith. Smith kicks it over. One-handed shot taken. No good. Howell comes away with a rebound for Jackson State, and the Tigers slowly take it across midcourt. Peanut takes it across midcourt. Smith on the defense. Howell goes on the near side. Crossover dribble. Goes to the paint. Puts it off the glass. Makes it good. And Chris Howe doing an excellent job of using his big body frame, getting into the defender and being able to put that one off the glass. Jackson State with a 13-point lead now, 43-30 to with 14-15 left in the game. Smith with a long-range three is going to be no good. Ball is in the air. Grambling comes away with it. Athey gets it away. Back to Smith. He gets it back. Penetrates in the paint. Dishes it over. Jumper taken. Three-pointer is good by Empoyo. And Empoyo really showing some range, able to play on the low post, play at the high post, and step out and knock down the three. So Jackson State getting it back down court now. Howell goes over to Peanut. Peanut looking, bounce passes it in to Spencer. Almost had it stolen away, but Peanut gets it back. Eight on the shot clock. Ross, spin move, loses the ball. Grambling comes away with it on the break. Quick heads up play by Jackson State, knocks it out of bounds. It's gonna be Jackson State's basketball. And good hustle by Chris Howe, really aggravating Athey on that fast break opportunity, causing Athey to lose the basketball. Absolutely right. Jackson State loses it. Ross lost it in transition, and Grambling came away with a break. But but uh, Jackson State's defense got right back and got the basketball back. So now the Tigers are going to go with William Brown at point. You gotta give Peanut a breather. Howell at the free throw line puts up the short range jumper. It's gonna be no good. Smith down court gives it up. Long arms, long legs for the G men. They missed the shot. Jackson State comes away with it, and they were all over that basket. The Tigers are doing a good job. Of, the Tigers of Jackson State doing a great job not giving up on plays and not just conceding fast break opportunities by Grambling, contesting everything and crashing the glass. Spencer now has it for Jackson State at the timeline on the far side. Goes up to Howell. Eight on the shot clock. Baseline. Wallace is going to be foul. Foul is going to be assessed against Grambling's Prince Moss. As Moss is second personal. So Jackson State will inbound it. Brown getting it in. Peanut back in the ball game, giving uh, Spencer a breather. So Jackson State controlling it offensively again. Howell goes to Ross on the far side. 
Back to Wallace. Stops. Pops. Three-point basket good. Benji Wallace with a Richard Sparks three-point shot. Nice move made by Benji. Getting the defender on his heels and able to step back and knock down the three-pointer. Grambling trying to score some points here. Smith launches one from the perimeter. It's going to be no good. Rebounded by Benji Wallace for Jackson State. And Jackson State really controlling tempo in this ball game, picking and choosing when to run and when to run clock in the half court. Chris Howell controlling it now. Goes to William Brown for Jackson State. Peanut on the far side goes to Howell on the far side wing. Howell bounces, a couple of bounces inside underneath the Brown who lays it up, and he's going to be fouled. Missed the shot, but he was fouled. And that's going to be three on Ivy Smith for Grambling. Oh, they're saying two. They're but saying he, two. He I has two three. in the book already. Yeah. We have a Stephen Investments timeout. We'll take one as well. With 11.32 left in the game, Jackson State 46, Grambling 33. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network. Jackson State University basketball brought to you by McCullum Physical Therapy, servicing all of your physical therapy needs on Highway 18 West, 601-487-8456, providing rehab from the heart. At the line, shooting for Jackson State, number 24, William Brown, at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, and he misses the shot. And uh, I'm not mistaken, we're about one out of our last nine yes. from the free throw line. It's like three out of 30, or three out of 20 something. <laughs> Missed both of them from the line. 11.26 left in the game. Jackson State still leading 46-33. Grambling trying to put up a shot. The whistle is going to be blown. A pushing foul is going to be assessed against Chris Howell. That's going to be Howell's second personal. And what you don't want to do is get Grambling in the bonus with too much time left in the ball game. Grambling will get it in. Backing up in the paint is Jackson. Shots up, taken and good. Three-point basket by Moss. And that's what Prince Moss can do is shoot the three. Moss with a three-point shot. Jackson State still with the lead, though. As the Tigers try to generate some offense, Grambling with his own. Jackson State with 10 on the shot clock. Ross to Brown, launches a three, it's good! Richard Swartz three-point shot. And Grisby Brown playing extremely well in double figures already. Brown with a three. Grambling coming back on the other end, attempting a three, it's going to be no good. Jackson State trying to get the ball back. It was whistle blown, it goes out of bounds. Let's see. They're going to say it was last touched by Jackson State. Yeah, it should be Grambling basketball. The ball was knocked out of bounds by Brisby on that deflection. But again, William Brown in this ball game, four for seven and two for three from downtown, 10 points off the bench. Jackson State on the defensive side now. Shot taken, no good. Tipped up. 
Yeah, that ball was blocked by Javis McGinnis. McGinnis with a block, and Jackson State comes away with it. As Wallace slows the tempo down for the Tigers with 10 minutes left in the game. Wallace to Brown. Howell has it now. Howell drives in. No shot. He's going to be fouled. They're going to say he's fouled by Jackson. The next foul on Gramley will put Jackson State in the bonus for the remainder of the game. So the Tigers will inbound it right now. Brown gets it in to Ross back near half court. So Peanut gets it across midcourt now. Howell has it for Jackson State. Little Razzle Dazzle puts up the shot. It's good. Again, Chris Howell making his jump shots. It's going to be a tough guard for any defender when he's knocking down the perimeter shot as well. 51-36 is our score. Jackson State with a lead with 9.24 remaining. Rambling, trying to generate some offense. There's a steal, and here comes William Brown. Boom! He tried to put it in. A little bit too short. He couldn't get it, but guess what? McInnes in the inform. And that could have been disastrous for William Brown. Coach Brent would have went crazy with the missed layups, which we've had too many of those over the past few ball games. Yeah, Coach Brent <laughs> went to him and checked him and said, hey, hey, now don't forget now. We got a timeout on the court with 9.05 left for Steeple Investments timeout. We'll take one as well. Our score, Jackson State 53, Grambling State 36. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network. Jackson State University basketball brought to you, of course, by Team Logic IT. Small businesses protect your computers with Team Logic IT. Visit TeamLogicIT.com slash Jackson MS. 8.55 left. Jackson State on the defensive side. Grambling with a basketball now. Shot taken. It's going to be no good by Jackson. And the Tigers of Jackson State come away with a rebound. And Grambling sticking with their offensive game plan of playing inside out really trying to play from the low block spencer goes up shot's going to be no good but we got a whistle blown on a foul is going to be assessed against chris howell he went for the steal but when ivy smith jr came down he came down on his foot and he slipped and fell and they're going to call chris howell with a foul yeah tough break for chris howell that's going to give him three fouls in this ball game So Peanut's getting ready to come back in for Jackson State. He's going to give, actually, he's going to get Howell out of there. He's going to get Howell out of there. Howell with three fouls right now with 8.23 left in the ballgame. Jackson State leading 53-36. Jackson State on the defense. Three-point attempt taken. It's going to be no good. Rebounded by Grambling. They put it back up. Shot's going to be no good, but a foul is called. Hilliard put the shot up, but he was fouled as he was going up. And they're going to 
gives Spencer that foul. And Polk Hilliard's been very active on the offensive glass for Grambling. Hasn't been able to convert, but now able to go to the line. Trayvon Bunch is about to check in for Grambling. He is a seven foot one junior out of Ramsey, Wisconsin. So he's listed at seven one. Doesn't look seven one. I guess if everybody out there is 6'8", six, 6'9", six, he don't look that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's listed as 7'1", 230 pounds. Browning at the line shooting, missed the shot. Jackson State comes away with a rebound. Jesse Love. Brown gives it up. Wallace having problems, a little pressure. Turns it over, tried to pass it out to Brown, and it goes knocked out of bounds. So Grambling will have it after we come back from this uh, Stiefel Investments timeout. With 7.54 left, Jackson State 53, Grambling 37. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. And 54 seconds left in regulation. Jackson State 53, Grambling 37. Sam Brown along with Trey Johnson providing the play-by-play -play action for you tonight here on the campus of Jackson State University. A key swag matchup, Jackson State and Grambling. The Jackson State Tigers 6 and 7 in the swag. Grambling 7 and 6. But right now, Jackson State out to a comfortable 53-37 lead. As the officials... Whole play here, they stop the band. The band trying to play the whole song. And the fans say, let them play ball. I'm not sure why that really matters in basketball. Nope. But hey. <laughs> Grambling will inbound it. Shot's gonna be no good by the seven foot oneer. He misses the shot underneath the basket. Foul's going to be assessed against Jackson State, against uh, Grambling's Moss as his third personal. So they ask the band to stop when the ball is in play, just like in football. Yeah, I can understand in football. You got play <laughs> calls going on at the line of scrimmage. and Right, but they're just playing basketball. I mean, it, you got arenas where they play music. The whole game almost. You know. Right. But, hey. 7.30 left in the game. Jackson State, 53, Grambling, 37. Grambling, penetrating in the lane. Shot's going to be no good. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by Grambling. So Jackson State will get it. And while we were discussing that, we missed another free throw at the, on the one and one by William Brown. Yes, he didn't go. He didn't make the shot from the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. Jackson State shooting terrible tonight from the free throw line. So the Tigers now still on defense. Grambling trying to generate some offense. Moss has it. Goes over to Rivero, who gives it back to Moss. Moss missed the shot. Moss out of Bessemer, Alabama. 
Seven minutes now left in regulation. Jackson State with a 53-37 lead over Grambling. As the Tigers now slow the tempo of the game down just a little bit. Howell puts it up with 10 seconds on the shot clock and hits nothing. That wasn't the shot that Coach Brent would want. I'm almost certain of that. They're going to call a blocking foul on Peanut. He was standing there. That was a blocking foul. Looks like Moss was trying to Euro step, sidestep him. I'm guessing that's why they're saying he was out of position because Moss changed his trajectory on direction. So Prince Moss will be at the line shooting for Grambling as he makes the first shot. Second shot coming up by Prince Moss. And he makes them both. All right, playing that on our exactly. on guys making the shot. Come on, man. Makes them both from the line. Jackson State having problems trying to get an open man now. And Grambling creates a turnover. Moss. Behind the back, Pat dribble goes out of bounds. Last touch by Moss. Jackson State with a prayer on that one. <laughs> Got the basketball back. The big break for us right there is Grambling applying the full court pressure and really. So Jackson State trying to get some, generate some offense as Brown. Went down with it, and he knocked it out and put it in Smith's hands, but Smith was standing out of bounds. They're going to say the foul's assessed against. Jackson State will inbound it. Jackson State's going to just hold it. Brown with five on the shot clock. Peanut launches it from three, and it's good for the Richard Swartz three-point shot by Ross. We'll take it, and that's really a backbreaker for Grambling or for any defense when a team is able to stall you out like that and then knock down a three-pointer or any score of any kind. Fouls on McInnes, third personal foul, as grounding was penetrating in the lane. McInnes commits the personal foul. It's going to be three on him. Jackson stayed with a 17-point lead as Grambling's Devontae Jackson goes to the line, and he makes the first shot. Second shot coming up. Immediately following the game, we'll hear the uh, post-game interview, the Zaxby's post-game interview with head coach Brent on the outcome of this ball game. Bramlin calls a timeout. We'll take a Stephen Investments timeout as well. Jackson State 56, Bramlin 41. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network.
530 left in the game. Jackson State 56, Grambling 41. Jackson State controlling it offensively. Three-point attempt taken by Brown. It's going to be no good. Jackson State trying to get the rebound. Grambling comes away with it. Whistle blown. Foul is going to be called on the floor. Foul's going to be assessed against William Brown. That's going to be his first personal. And William Brown got to be smarter than that on the offensive end. Again, shooting a three-pointer, you're up 15, five minutes remaining. Why not stall them out, run your offense? You can get that same shot with five, four seconds on the shot clock. It's going to send Anthony Gaston to the line for Grambling. Gaston's first shot is up, in, and good. Second shot attempt coming up. In, and he makes it good. Full court press by Grambling, double teaming Peanut. He gets it across midcourt. Jackson State trying to slow the tempo down. Pressurized defense by the G-men now. Peanut's going to be fouled hard by Smith. And we definitely caught a break on that one. Yeah. His peanut was falling to the floor prior to the contact. That's going to be four on Smith. That's going to be four on Smith. I'm not sure what the referee is calling here. They're going to talk about it. Are they going to? Yeah, they're shooting from the line. So Ross Peanut will be shooting from the line. Peanut Ross at the line shooting one and one. So he's going to be at the line shooting the one and one. As they mop the floor up where he fell. There's been a lot of mopping going on. Yeah, a lot night. of mopping. He missed the shot. Grambling with a rebound. 4.59 left in the game now. Grambling 43, Jackson State 56. Smith with four personal fouls is still in the game. William Brown commits his second personal foul. That's going to send Smith to the line for Grambling with two shots. And missed free throws by us is the only reason that this game is even still a possibility of being a close game. Still a 13-point lead, but not converting on the other end. It's really hurting us right here. So Smith makes the first one of two. Both teams in the bonus, and he makes them both. And it looks like Grambling is going offense to defense to take Ivy Smith out of the game on defense so he won't pick up that fifth foul. So we've got an 11-point game now for Jackson State. Foul is going to be called. Foul is going to be called on Grambling's Prince Moss. That's going to be his fourth. His fourth. And it'll put us back on the line where we have struggled here tonight. And if we can just start making a couple of free throws, we can put this ball game away. So at the line shooting for Jackson State's William Brown. And he makes the shot. He's at the Brew Cross Brew Shield free throw line. Makes the shot. Second shot coming up, and he misses it. Grambling comes away with a rebound, and Smith back on the court to provide some offensive uh, shooting capabilities for Grambling. Rivero has it now. They're working it around the far side. That's Jackson underneath, makes the shot good. Chris Howe's got to give more resistance right there on the post. 
Benji Wallace was coming down court. He was tripped up and fouled. He was fouled by Anthony Gaston. So they're gonna they're gonna need the mop <laughs> again. Well, the mop girls. That's got to be a record tonight for how many times we've needed the mop. And they're just sauntering on out there like they're just hey. And the <laughs> Chris Howell got the mop, and he's doing it. Rob J hates this. He hates when he sees the players using the mop and mopping up the floor. Yeah. She's showing him where to mop. How about that? How about that? So they need a, a training course on how to mop, how to mop girls. And coming down the stretch here, this. Is she just walking off like this? All right. <laughs> this time is working in the favor of Grambling. This game is turning ugly. A lot of fouls being called. But. We have to make our free throws, and again, the only reason that Grambling is even within 10 is because we've missed our free throws. And we're still missing them. Benji Wallace at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line missed the free throw then. It's a 10-point ball game with 427, so Grambling is not out of it yet. And that's the scary part. Yeah. Second shot coming up. And he makes it. One out of two from the line for Benji Wallace from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. And we can't keep doing that at the line, getting one out of two while they're coming down and scoring two points. Shot's going to be blocked by Grambling. Jackson State controlling it. And Grambling now providing a little defensive pressure. Jackson State got away with a backcourt violation on that one. As they settle down, Benji Wallace controls it offensively, looking for Peanut. He's uh, guarded heavily on the other side. Now he has the basketball. Smith is still on the court. 3.51 left. Shot clock violation. No, they're going to call a foul. Fouls on Empoyo. That was a saving grace. Definitely a saving grace, I mean. The officiating hasn't been that good tonight for either team, but we'll take that one. We got a steeple investment timeout on the floor. We'll take one as well with 348 left. Jackson State 58, grounding 47. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. minutes and 48 seconds left in regulation our score jackson state 30 58 grambling state 47 both teams are in the bonus right now for the duration of the ball game jackson state shooting terribly from the free throw line tonight <laughs> that's the exact word to use terribly grambling has cut their lead cut their deficit well it's now it's back to 11 and uh, Howell just made the free throw to increase it to 12. And he has one more to shoot. And he makes them both. The Blue Cross Blue Shield free throws made by Chris Howell. Rambling now, down court with it. Hilliard goes over to Smith. Smith looking at the basket. Kicks it down on the wing to Jackson. Jackson backs in the lane, kicks it out. Three-point attempt taken and good by Roberto. 
Grambling applying pressure here again on that made shot. 10 point lead by Jackson State with 313 left. Peanut has it on the on the court. Gets the pass off. Jackson State with 10 on the shot clock. Good job. Wallace has it. Sorry about that, Sam. Good job of them working the clock here. And a traveling violation. But you don't want to work the clock and then turn the basketball <laughs> over. And again, they're not just standing out stalling. They're running their offense, moving the ball from side to side, trying to get the highest percentage shot available. But then when it's underneath five seconds, being able to just go and get a good shot attempt should not be as difficult. Grambling now trying to generate some offense. Smith penetrating in the lane, puts it up, and he makes a shot good. How did he do that? I don't know. He just threw it up there. A circus shot by Ivy Smith. He was searching for contact to try and draw the foul. Love throws it away, and Grambling comes away with it again. Smith puts it up, and he makes a shot good. This game That's has gotten walking. extremely close here, and yeah. all because of missed free throws. Grambling applying a full court press. Two minutes and 10 seconds left. Jackson State holding on. Now it's a six point lead by the Tigers. With two minutes remaining. 10 on the shot clock. Peanut goes to Howell. Penetrates in the paint. He misses the shot and he's fouled. And like we spoke of earlier, it's going to come down to making free throws here in this ball game. That's his fourth. Gillian commits his fourth personal foul for Grambling. And Jackson State doing an excellent job in the half court on really burning up that clock and then going and getting the shot. And as that free throw is missed, this. This is getting interesting. Unfortunately. Howell from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line makes one out of two. And that's the problem. You get one out of two and Gremlin goes and gets two or three and they're able to cut into your lead quickly. Smith drives on the paint. Foul. And he's going to go to the line. That foul is going to be assessed against McGinnis. That's going to be McGinnis's fourth personal. And Coach Dante Jackson for Grambling is saying, take it to him. Take it to him. Smith makes the first shot. They're going offense, defense up right here now for Grambling. They're going to take out Polk Hilliard and probably Ivy Smith after this free throw if he makes it. They're going to sub them out. And they're going to put guys in there who can give away fouls as those two guys are big offensive keys to them, and they have four fouls apiece. And Smith comes out being replaced by Athey. Five-point lead for Jackson State. Foul is going to be assessed against Gramlin before the ball is in. Roberio. Commits his third personal foul before the play starts. The but what happens is that I was about to say the crazy thing how this works in Gramlin's favor is no time comes off the clock. Right. So Peanut will be at the line shooting two for Jackson State at the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. And he makes a shot. First shot is good from the line by Dantellis Ross, a.k.a. Peanut. Second shot coming up from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, and he makes them both. So Gramlin will inbound it again. And good defensive play call right here by Coach Brent, just showing a little token full court pressure to make Gramlin have to use some clock. Smith penetrates in the lane, puts it up, and makes the shot good. So Grambling calls 
a timeout. We'll take a steeple investments timeout as well with a minute 28. Jackson State 63, rounding 58. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. Minute 28 seconds left in the ball game. Jackson State leading Grambling 63-58 here. But the G-Men have come back strong. Jackson State trying to maintain his lead. As Jackson State will get to inbound it on the other end of the court. Chris Howell will inbound it for Jackson State. Grambling set up for full court press. They're man to man right now. And they get it in. Jackson State get it in. And Jackson State breaks the press. Gets it across midcourt. Howell. It's going to be foul by Ribeiro. And it looks like Grambling is going to try to extend this time and play the fouling game here for the remainder of the way and put us back on the line where we have struggled tonight to see if we can close this game out. So Chris Howell will be at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line shooting. And he makes it. He makes the first shot. One shot left. Howell takes a shot, and he makes it good. Got the roll. Makes both shots from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line with a minute 13 left. Jackson State 65, Gramlin 58. Smith penetrates, gives it over. Three-point shot taken, no good. Rebounded by Gramlin. Smith bags it back again. Pass, shot. Ross takes a shot, misses it. Moss missed the shot. It went out of bounds. They're going to say it was last touched by Grambling. Break right there for us. Yeah. Grambling got the offensive rebound and got a good look at a shot at him. Looks like they're going to go to the monitor and see who that ball was out on as Grambling asked for them to review that. So with 54 seconds left in this game, if you're Coach Brent right now, what are you telling you guys? You have to make free throws. I mean, as simple as that. If you make free throws, we're not even in this situation right now. Um, I'm interested to see the final numbers on how many free throws we have missed up until this point, but it's well into the double digits. And you're here clinging to a seven-point lead where you could easily be leading by 17 right now. And, you know, when you when you miss these kind of these many free throws at home, <laughs> you know, wish you free throws like we're on the road right now. You know, you miss these many free throws at home, something, something, I don't know, I don't know. No, you're exactly right. And, you shoot on these rims each and every day in practice. And like I said, we spend countless times in practice working on free throws. So it's inexplainable, inexcusable for the guys to be missing these types of, these amount of free throws. So how do you fix that? You just... I mean, it's just a mental approach by the player. I mean, there's nothing a coach can do about you making free throws. You're spending the time doing it. It would be different if I was sitting here saying we don't really shoot free throws enough in practice, but we spend hours shooting free throws. So for these guys to not be mentally locked in, they have to look in the mirror and take some type of accountability on themselves. 54 seconds left in regulation. Jackson State maintaining a 65-58 lead here. 
The officials are discussing something out at near midcourt. And it's going to be Jackson State's basketball. It's going to be JSU basketball here with 54 seconds left. And the full court press applied by Gramlin. And it goes out of bounds. They're going to say it was last touched by Gramlin. And Gramlin wants a review. And this one may go their way from what it looks like to the naked eye. I could be wrong. Hopefully it remains our basketball, but <laughs> the official was right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was right there. And again, anything under a minute can be reviewed to get the call correct. So they're looking at it right now. And you got to, you know, when they implemented this in the SWAC, a lot of people didn't want it. Some people didn't want it. A lot of people did want it. And it works. It works. Is that exactly? It definitely works. You want referees to get certain calls right, especially when it comes down to crunch time. I like the under one minute rule because you don't want to have to review every single thing that happens in the game. You want to keep the human element involved into the game. But, you know, under a minute, no fan or player or coach wants to see a game decided by an incorrect call where it could easily be corrected. So they're looking at the monitor right now to determine if the basketball was knocked out of bounds by a Jackson State player or a Grambling State player. Right now the call says that it's Jackson State's basketball. So they're looking at it right now. It should be clear cut. If you... you would think so with the referee standing right yeah, there. He was right there. He was quite sure of himself when he made the call that Absolutely. it was Jackson State ball. But yeah. I mean, they're taking a long time to watch it, so I would think it would remain Jackson State basketball as it's got to be indisputable. Okay, so now they've left the monitors, and now they're back on the court. <laughs> so now they got to I mean I figured they would make the call for the monitor Gramlin's ball the call was changed Gramlin's ball so it's Gramlin's basketball so with 51 seconds left they're going to inbound it and the shot was going to be blocked. The long arm of the law, Javius McKinnis, blocking that shot. Jackson went for the dunk. McKinnis blocked it. And the Tigers come away with it. Wallace is going to hold it up, and he's going to be fouled. 32 seconds left. Foul is going to be assessed against Hilliard. That's going to be five. And that's a key possession. A key defensive possession right there for us, Javis McKinnis stuffing Jackson at the rim. Great block shot by McKinnis. Jackson has been dominating pretty much all night. He got up there and blocked that shot. So Hilliard is out. Benji Wallace at the line at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, shooting two. Makes the shot good. Makes it good. And even though they've been missing them all night, they made them. <laughs> when it counts. In the clutch, when it counts. And I guess that's what matters. They don't worry about what we talk about. <laughs> he makes them both. He makes both of them. 67, 58. Smith down court quickly with it for Grambling. Puts it up. Makes the shot good. Jackson State getting it in, but a foul is going to be called. This foul's on number 11, Empoyo. Foul's going to be on Empoyo. That's going to be a second personal. 
with 25 seconds left, a seven-point lead at the line for Jackson State is John Trail Walker. And you would think these two free throws could really just seal the deal here with 25 seconds remaining and could give you a nine-point lead. Walker at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, and he makes one. Walker, first basket on the night. Second one is good. So John Trail Walker makes both shots from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line with 24 seconds left. Grambling trying to play a pickup game, and he loses the basketball that time. Walker has it again, and he's fouled. And that was frustration by Rivero. He needed to foul, but could have got himself an unsportsmanlike foul on that one. But nonetheless, big-time win right here for us after dropping four in a row and able to come back and get this game. And this game will flip positions. Oh, from sixth to fifth in the standings. We'll have the same record as Grambling in conference, seven and seven. Yet we have the tiebreaker with two victories over Grambling. So that's going to put uh, at the line for Jackson State, John Trail Walker at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, which has 17 seconds remaining. And once again, they're trying to, dis they're looking at the monitors. They're trying to see if it was intentional. Maybe that could be what they're looking at to see. Kind of prolongs the game a little bit. Yeah, I mean, really no point at this point in the game. It, Jackson State, we're still shooting two free throws regardless. So. Right. And with 17 seconds left. But I guess, you know, everybody has a job to do, so I they're being evaluated just like yeah, everybody else. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> So at the line shooting is uh, Walker, Jackson State, the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. And he's perfect. Three in a row. He should have been shooting all night, though. <laughs> Second one up. In and good. Walker makes both from the line. So Smith gets it in for Grambling. 15 seconds left. Smith goes over to Moss, takes a three-pointer. It's going to be no good. Jackson State with a rebound. And the Tigers with five, four. And that's going to end the ball game. Jackson State, 71, and Grambling, 60. Jackson State goes up 7-7 seven and seven in the swag. Grambling drops to 7-7. Seven and seven. What are your thoughts on the game? A uh, great game plan by Coach Brent. The guys did a great job of bringing energy and effort tonight, something we've been lacking over the past four ball games. But attacking the paint, really getting on the glass and defending. We hang our hat on defense, but able to come out here and also be aggressive offensively and maintain that aggression throughout the game. Four more games left. What do you think Jackson State needs to work on? Well, <laughs> obviously free we throw. need to make more free throws, but... Just remaining aggressive on the offensive end. Don't let up the defensive pressure. We've been doing, we've been applying that type of pressure all year long. That's not the problem, but we have to maintain offensively the aggression that we play with on the defensive end to score points and get second chance opportunities at the rim. All right, we got uh, Coach Brent here with us right now. We're going to talk with Coach Brent. Uh, Coach, congratulations first of all on the win tonight against Grambling, it was a, a, actually it ended up being a tough ball game, Coach. Congratulations. Man, appreciate it. You know, anytime you can get a win, especially after what we've been through, we lost four in a row, and, you know, our kids just, just kept fighting and stayed with it because, you know, our kids could have easily just quit when we, we were 0-4, a lot of negative negative talking, people negative talking, people getting down on you, but our kids just stayed the course, and they just stayed positive. Free throw situation has been a problem tonight. We didn't make a lot of free throws, and we're at home, uh, and, and, you know, we talked to Trey. Trey said, you know, we got hours and hours and hours of free throw practice here. And, you know, we were shooting free throws tonight like we were on the road. You know, so we, we, how do you fix that? I mean, what? You what? know, we, you just got to go back in there and give them confidence. We had all of our guys make 100 yesterday. Then they had to come back yesterday night and make another 100. And then they came back today and they had to shoot them for 15 minutes. And, like, we're getting, we're getting worse with it. But. 
you know, the power design is we got to win, and it's easy to coach them when you, when you win. But I'm, I'm so proud of these guys. You know, this is probably one of uh, the proudest, proudest wins that I've gotten because, you know, at 0 4, that's different for me and, and just for guys to, to continue to play because guys can easily quit on you and tank the season. But, you know, we, we in fifth place. We won game out of, out of fourth, so uh, we got to continue to, 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 to keep digging. Okay, so how do you how do you approach your next game, coach? You know what we got Mississippi Valley. We got a, a week off, and we got the Valley Pine Bluff trip. But we take it one game at a time. We look at the standings. Uh, we know we we tied for fifth with uh, with with Gremlin, but we beat them twice. So we, we know we we got the, we got the heads up on them because we beat them twice. But the thing now is looking to see how can we get that fourth spot. And the only way you can get it, you know, you got to beat your next opponent. And that'll be a tough game going to Valley next next Saturday. Absolutely, because, uh, you know, you're playing against Mississippi Valley, but you're playing them at their place. And it's a, a hostile environment. It's a small, closed-in court. You know, how, right. well, how are you going to prepare that with you guys? You know, we, we just got to go in and, 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 and just be fun to know the sound. We got to go in and watch the film, uh, watch the game from when we played them this time, watch their, their last couple of games. And we, we just got to make sure we continue to coach these guys and, and, and put them in a position to win basketball games. Any final comments, Coach? You know, I just I just want everybody to continue to support this team, and this team hadn't quit. Uh, you know, we're going to keep fighting to the end. Thank you much, Coach. Uh, congratulations once again on the win. Appreciate it. Coach Wayne Brent, Jackson State with a win over Grambling, 71-60. to We're going to come back and close it out after we have this break. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. Back in one minute. Back here at the AAC, Jackson State 71, Grambling 60. Jackson State goes to 7-7 seven and seven on the SWAC. Grambling as well, 7-7 seven and seven on the SWAC. Tied for fifth place. Tonight's game has been a presentation of Jackson State University President Dr. William Bynum, Jr., Director of Athletics, Ashley Robinson, and the Chair of the Department of Journalism and Media Studies, Dr. Elaine Hayes Anthony. Our technical director is Bill Wilson. This is Sam Brown for Trey Johnson and Don Wansley. So we say so long from the AAC. Again, the final score, Jackson State 71, Grambling 60. Join us back on Monday when JSU plays Mississippi Valley in Itabina. You can hear it all right here on the Tiger Radio Network. So long, everybody. That is next Saturday. All right. Cool. All right, I'm out. All right.